Hi, this is Chris with LaunchCode, and in this uh, next series of videos, we're going to be introducing you to models, the concept of models here in our Spring Boot application. So a model is essentially the thing that your application is about. It's the what. So it's uh, some people refer to models as being the uh, quote-unquote business data of the application. Um, and so basically it's, it's going to consist of, um, our model will consist of all classes that are um, entities or items that we will eventually store in the database and that are the things that uh, make up the sort of real meat of our application. So uh, let's get started. Let's create a model. And in this video, we're going to um, create an event model. Our application is a coding events application. And uh, so far, this is really the only um, model class we could consider creating one that corresponds to events. I'm going to create a new package for my models. So let's go to the top level package of my project, right click and say new package. We'll call this models. And then within the models package, I'm going to create a new class. And we'll call this event. Okay, so this is just uh, an empty class and I do want to add that to version control. Thank you. This is an empty class and what we're going to do with this is uh, essentially replace the behavior that we have implemented over in our event controller. Um, which we have been, you know, basically storing events as uh, strings within a list. We're still going to use a list to gather up all of our events, but we want to store store them as event objects instead. And right now, we only have a very very simple model, and uh, it, it might seem like we're doing a lot of work here um, for not much payoff. But the payoff will become much more clear as we add complexity to our application. So right now, essentially, we're just going to be um, refactoring to replicate the same exact behavior, but using an event class this class should have one property that property should be a string and that will be the event name so let's go add that in and uh, give myself some room here in the event class and i'm going to make a private string name and now i'm going to use some of intellij's auto generate functionality here so again you can right click and go to generate and i'm going to create a constructor that uh, just takes a name and then below the constructor i will add some getters and setters for my new properties or my new property, so you have a single property. And then, um, let's see, there's one more thing I want to do, which is to make a two string method. So let's add that here. And uh, I, I'm just going to have my two string method just sort of return the value of, um, of name here. Okay, so that's it. And uh, we talked previously about how you should add your own equals method and your own hash code methods to classes. We'll do that um, eventually. I'm going to leave those off for now just because uh, there's some other work that I want to do before I actually add those. But we won't, we won't leave our class without a dot equals or a dot hash code for very long. Okay, so now we have um, an event object or event class. We can create event objects. Let's go back to our controller and refactor the controller so that it uses event objects. The first thing I want to do is take this static list at the top of the controller and replace the string data type here and say that my events static list will um, uh, contain event objects. Again, be careful when you're using these auto suggestions, make sure you're getting the right class imported. And that is the right class. We can double check by going up above and we can see that, let's see, here it is. This is ours. This is the class we just created. Okay, now I've got some compiler errors because I changed data types. It's not surprising. Let's kind of follow the uh, breadcrumbs laid out by these compiler errors to guide what our next updates will be. Down here in the process create event form method, I am adding a string to my list of events. Now I just changed the data type of that list to be a list of event objects rather than a list of strings. So I can't just pass in uh, a string anymore. I need to pass in an event object. Thankfully, it's pretty straightforward to do that. So I can say new event and pass in the name. The constructor there takes just a string. And so now this will create a new event object and at the same time pass it into the list. And so it'll add it to that list there. And um, let's check out or briefly look at our other methods to make sure there are no other uh, updates we need to make here. This one is just displaying a form. It's not actually using any data. So that one's fine as is. This one up here uses the events object, but it's just passing it into the view. So we're not going to need to um, make any changes here. We do, however, need to make changes to this particular view. So let's go and make that change. This is our event listing index. So let me go to the template, uh, templates, events, index. And here we're looping over in our table, we're looping over a list of events. And uh, this is set up to reference 
these events as strings, as a list of strings. And so now, instead of a list of strings, we have, recall we have a list of events. Each of those events has a name property. So um, this item right here in this in this loop, um, this for each loop, whenever it's uh, this variable is initialized, it's going to be an event object. And in order to reference the the name of that, I can just put dot name. And what this does is it implicitly uses the getter. Timeleaf, when it's building this template, will implicitly use the getter for the name field. Um, recall that the name field is actually private, right? So you can't access it directly. Um, this is just a little bit of you know what developers might call syntactic sugar. It's just uh, an, a little bit of syntax that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to use. Um, and what what it's really doing, it's not referencing the field. Uh, Timeleaf will implicitly use the get name method there. And just recall too, we didn't see a compiler error for for this. Uh, if we had run this code without changing this template, we would have seen an error when we ran the application. So. Um, Timeleaf templates are, while well, they are, uh, you know, eventually compiled in the classes, they're, they're, you're not going to see compile time errors for uh, things like this. You'll see them at runtime. Okay, so let's test this out. All right, so I'll start it up. Let me refresh my page, and my data should all go away. And so here we, uh, no errors so far. What do we need to test to make sure this works? Well, we need to be able to create an event and see that they're displayed. So let's create an event that worked. That was indeed displayed. Let's create another one just for kicks. And there we go. So um, our application works exactly the same way as it did before. That's uh, that's the definition of refactoring. But now it has a much better structure. We're, we're modeling our data, literally using model classes. And that's going to allow us much more flexibility and power as we move forward with uh, future lesson videos.